Hello, this is Airsoft News reporting from Eva Nuremberg. We are here with Mr. Airsoft himself. So uh, let's start with a few questions. Um, we have been following the progress of Cybergun for the years and you have been steadily increasing your market share uh, with primarily with new brands that you have been acquiring. And um, when did this first start with new with, with licensing? Thank you very much for your interview. Uh, I would say that the uh, first beginning uh, started a long time ago, first of all to create new consumer. When we started in the very beginning, it was uh, in the show in between uh, agricultural show or Foire de Paris, where the mass people were just discovering the first train pistols. Mm -hmm. uh, but very soon we discovered that the suppliers in Asia they do not follow the copyright regulation. Yeah. So as a result, uh, it's not like Cybergun wanted to get licensed. It was an obligation by the law. And we mentioned this information to the factories in Asia, like the Tokyo Mori, that is a very long-term partner with us for more than 25 years mm -hmm. now, when we started to sell a radio control car at that time. Uh, and then, step by step, we informed uh, the Taiwanese and the Japanese factory that is a need for, by regulation mm -hmm. to make sure uh, they have the authorization from Beretta, mm -hmm. from Glock, from Gold and so on. But most of them, they ignore this information. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the point of view in Japan particularly was uh, we don't need that because here in Japan the regulation is different. So of course it might be different in Japan and uh, why not? But the truth is in Europe, it is impossible to use the brand or the design of somebody else uh, without permission. Uh, so we started in 1995 and 1996 to meet uh, with uh, factories like Six Hour, Gold, Smith & Wesson, Beretta, Walter to ask permission to uh, make the distribution of their products and uh, using this uh, permission to offer in France and after that all over Europe. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but I think the Taiwanese and the Japanese companies seem to be more approachable regarding this and the mainland China companies have basically very little, if any, regard for any copyright. Is this the, is this, is this the proper uh, image that we get as uh, the market consumers? The point of view of many uh, Asia factories is they look at licensing like a cost, mm -hmm. licensing like a tax. Yeah. In fact, uh, in Europe, we do know very well that uh, first of all, the copyright is the only way to keep our uh, countries busy with employment, with business, with new ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at example on our uh, hero in France, for example, might be uh, Mr. Arnaud from uh, LVMH, which is a luxury group now uh, number one in the world yes. uh, and uh, one of the most important employment uh, for the French country, which needs some industry. Luxury industry is working well with perfume, bags. Yes. Uh, when we look at the technology of the bags, which is an example, and ask your wife, why does she would be happy to have that 1,000 US dollar bags? Is it for technology reason? It's <laughs> <laughs> very doubtful. <laughs> okay, then, uh, so you have been acquiring new licenses, and I, through the years we have experienced that the quality of our products that, that were uh, sold under the Cyberdome brand and uh, under other brands have, has been steadily increasing step by step. I would say that um, uh, the, the right way to describe is a real partnership with the gun factories that are usually in the military business and their job is to sell uh, weapons for the defense of the country. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very far from uh, a standpoint of toys which is our business yes. more or less. It's something that we just use for fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a car, like boats, zoos or toys for boys. And you can spend ten dollar or ten million US dollar in the toys if you like a luxury boat, for example. Um, the concept is that we partnership with a factory, we ask them permission, but we cooperate how to set a right product 
at the right price according to their requests. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have the example of the Tanfolio. Mm -hmm. With uh, Massimo Tanfolio has been asking us to set this uh, replica as best as possible. Mm -hmm. We have spent years before to reach the quality to make it not only a beautiful replica that looks like mm -hmm. a real gun, but also a perfect uh, target shooting model that now is going with this electronic target system mm -hmm. and it's proven to be the best airsoft in the market for speed shooting, mm -hmm. which is no more like uh, uh, a point of view because everybody can come in this shooting range with any airsoft and try to compete and to make a better score than this portfolio mm -hmm. is very welcome. Yes, Until we now, we never <laughs> had any chance to see a better product. Well, it is a very nice product, uh, and I think the Eric Grofel is helping you promote not just the brand but also the shooting sport. Many years together with Eric Grofel, who is, I uh, would like to say again, five time world champion yes. with real firearms. Yeah. So, uh, and Massimo Tanfolio, the owner of mm -hmm. the Tanfolio factory, yes. together with the subcontractors uh, in Asia to uh, make a spirit where everybody is good where they are good at job uh, to do mm -hmm. it properly. Uh, it's now a pleasure to introduce this item worldwide in the uh, 15 different branches uh, mm -hmm. at Cybergun from Asia, Europe to USA and to introduce a product that is really good. Yes. Which markets would you say that you are currently targeting the most? Because Europe and the um, United States and Asia seem to be very well developed as far as that goes. For instance, Africa and South America are much less developed. Australia, not not at all, because it's forbidden there. So, are you targeting, let's say, South America? Of course. Uh, the, uh, what is interesting to mention here is that when we started to do the uh, shot show in USA mm -hmm. in the 1995, 1996, and uh, with uh, a few uh, hundreds of US dollars spending at that time to introduce airsoft gun, it was a big fun because everybody laughed at airsoft gun over there. Mm -hmm. When we introduced this product to all the large partners, including uh, Crossman, including Gamo, including uh, Daisy, uh, they just mentioned to us it's impossible to sell any airsoft in America because nobody is going to buy it. The reason for their point of view is they are so good with air gun and their brand is so strong, mm -hmm. they don't need uh, this business. So step by step, uh, after uh, our dream become more uh, true, mm -hmm. when we started to do by ourselves, and the reason we did by ourselves our own uh, software USA branch is because nobody trusts in airsoft gun at that time. Of course, today they totally changed their mind. And mm -hmm. to answer your question, indeed, it's still in the USA market that mm -hmm. we have a big, big potential growth. Yes. What about the South America? I, 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 we see a huge uh, growth in uh, Argentina, for instance, but other South American countries, not so much, but it is growing. It's, it's a, a, a very good question where, of course, we try to help as much as possible importers and distributors. Now it's also a question of investment where, yes. uh, unfortunately, with the very small profitability in this niche business, mm -hmm. certainly because of the sense to the passion, yeah. uh, passion business drag down a lot profitability and as uh, you know our results are extremely thin. Mm -hmm. We published uh, last year a pretty good result with 5% uh, net profit margin mm -hmm. but probably 2011 will be closer to 2% yes, net profit margin. Yes, the general mar market situation. Yeah, it's, it's a tough situation generally speaking. Yes. Uh, cost increase is a very high, mm -hmm. particularly in Asia and China where uh, a small number of the factories take mm -hmm. advantage and mm -hmm. uh, indeed on, uh, on the side of the factories in Asia uh, the profitability is extremely high compared to what we can experience and offer to distributor and retailers mm -hmm. but it is the essence of the future we need a strong distributor and strong retailer to afford to keep up the business for a long time uh, your latest product uh, on the market has been this wonderful shooting range it is fully automated. You have two versions of it, the small one and the large one. Uh, do you see this as a, the future of 
adding value to your product? It's uh, uh, extremely important that uh, street people and uh, normal consumers are developed more and more in order to enjoy in the long term within 10 to 15 years a lot more in this industry, I would say a high-end level consumer, it needs to start by a spring pistol uh, sold at, uh, at a retailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way to enjoy airsoft is also including that style of target shooting, which makes uh, the reason why to purchase such a kind of product, particularly when we go to uh, uh, pistols, and guns, uh, blowback and guns, mm -hmm. it's really nice product. But it's even nicer when we can use it on a practice shooting or speed shooting like IPSC style. Not only as this is important, but the presentation we did uh, starting in the shot show is the battle zone mm -hmm. that we may introduce uh, now if you like. Uh, that is the model that we have seen yeah. outside, yes. Would this be uh, like a theme park? It is like a theme park, so uh, why not we go over there? Yes, sure yes please you. do. In order to understand uh, this uh, presentation, here is a model of the park that we suppose might be the perfect example for an owner. Particularly in America, there are a lot of owners of a paintball field. Yes. Paintball field owners are not having a bright future now because their business is mature. So if we like to see the uh, person what is their future within 5 to 10 years, is as a stable or slightly declining today. They can move on with the uh, 21st century style of entertainment park that we can see here. It starts with a room where a uh, family arrive together and boys are going to the room where PC game, particularly the free to play War Inc. help them to spend a little time. Meanwhile, father and mother are going to the Kalashnikov coffee that you can see here mm -hmm. and sit down, ask for snacks, pizza, uh, beverage, coke, mm -hmm. or, or ev eventually uh, Kalashnikov energy drink. Yes. Then father is looking for something very serious. We are back to that kind of uh, practice shooting with real replica, with products that are very serious fast shooting on a range like mm -hmm. a, a policeman or law enforcement CQB training. Style. This is more, I would say, professional, mm -hmm. this in my, in my like opinion. a training facility. Exactly. Meanwhile, for the youngest and boys, there is a labyrinth style of uh, shooting on target and running and shooting on target. This is more a little bit in between IPSC and the same IDs like video game as well. Mm -hmm. It's like shooting with real airsoft gun in a, in a safe uh, environment safe and, and fun as you are uh, Realistic. running. Exactly. And it's similar as a, as a video game uh, mm -hmm. style. Once. Uh, the 10 boys are ready to go to the CQB to make their party. This is exactly similar as a paintball mm -hmm. style of, uh, of having fun. The big difference is the paintball is a very messy, it's dirty, it's, it's hurting because it's more than yes. paintball usually. With airsoft, we have a biodegradable release. Mm -hmm. It's very safe, it's less dangerous, yes. it's not messy. And so much more realistic more realistic because we use a, a nice product for adults. Nevertheless, for children, we are going to introduce a style of product mm -hmm. that is totally politically correct mm -hmm. and even the boys are not so optimistic with the look of yeah. this product. It's necessary also to give in the end of a fresh and young consumer something that is to get them started to start without any political issues. Yes. We do not give guns in the end of boys, we give them a toy that toy? looks like a toy. Yes. Of course, if the father decides it's better to bring this home, it's a decision of parents. Yes, it's not, not yours. Ours. It's not exactly. our decision. So once this uh, uh, family and some friend and mother chatting each other around the Kalashnikov bar, at the end of the day, they are going outside through the store and in the store that is dedicated here with a complete service, with a, a warranty mm -hmm. on, uh, on the product. Mm -hmm. And once they have a selection of products that is also completely QC by Cybergun, yeah. needless to say that Cybergun is the only one airsoft company with more than 20% employees of the group in China, Shenzhen and yeah. Hong Kong. 
to control and to negotiate with factories in Asia to make sure it's 100% high quality. Nevertheless, we need service. Of course. Because those products are pretty fragile. Like and service is the, usually was the weak point of, of, of the whole operation because from our point of view, when I was, I look at it as a consumer, when I bought something, I have learned to repair it through time. But basically when a novice comes in and something breaks, if the service department is not well, the bad reputation goes to the manufacturer, not to the shop. Absolutely. And I will even uh, uh, say that the weak point today is a very good uh, retailer with very good service yes. in a given place Absolutely. is excellent for consumer. But once this consumer is going to another country to enjoy in the yeah. summertime in Spain or Italy or whatever, we will face the problem that nobody wants to service him. With the concept of battle zone that we try to motivate uh, uh, investors and uh, retailers to do, to, do, to do this way mm -hmm. and to use this service, indeed whoever purchased at whatever battle zone in Europe mm -hmm. is going to have the service wherever he's going. It's uh, like you purchase your car and you have a service for your car yes. uh, 1000 kilometers from home. It will work exactly the same way. So it's going to be like a franchise? It is not a franchise in the sense we don't want to collect any royalties uh -huh. by the franchising. It's a much more open and much more cool system, but it's pretty similar. Mm -hmm. So you will be basically offering the concept to your partners so they can have they can copy the same layout and everything with your support and um, then then it's for their for them to run it to operate it and to profit from it yes the uh, investors will be the operator mm -hmm. but the whole uh, architecture concept uh, furniture electronic target all the system is supplied by you. yes i begun with the new uh, b4s uh, brain for solution wrench is going to manage with dedicated uh, mm -hmm. uh, person from a to c what would you estimate for such a operation to be worth it and if, if for the beginning for someone who is would be interested in something like this this uh, complete uh, presentation is an investment in the area of uh, 350,000 euro mm -hmm. this says uh, 700 square meter size uh, more or less uh, the return on investment is after three to four years um, is a very high profit margin and safe on the long term for mm -hmm. the retailer in the sense is like a selective distribution yes. is more or less similar as a perfume shop and a, a theme park together mm -hmm. so it's either to give like uh, uh, an um, uh, investors in a bowling or investors in a carting. Uh, yes. But this is uh, uh, together with four different profit centers, mm -hmm. in which the profit center is a very high profitability on the bar and uh, and uh, uh, um, snacks, uh, as we know, even in the shop not... and the range and everything. Exactly. And the service. Yes. So it's a big difference with a regular uh, pinball field where you have only one profit center. Yes. It's a very difficult to get through as a profitability is it's much more safer and also it includes a lot of uh, uh, possibilities like a birthday party for the mm -hmm. youngest where we can even invite very young uh, consumer with water gun mm -hmm. if we don't yeah. want to go with anything yeah, yeah. too uh, difficult uh, and also uh, with a young uh, uh, male uh, 20 25 years old the university mm -hmm. play in the evening a lot of other possibilities. Or maybe even pre presenting of new product for a, a brand that you have license for, for real weapons and stuff like that, or for tactical gear. It could be presented in such a place. It is when we think about ourselves, but also it's even more important to have companies coming here for team building. Absolutely. And the team building is very important it nowadays. Is more than ever because uh, you need a good team to work for you. That's why we prepare this, as you know, with some part which is really the sport and sometimes the rest and the socialization. This is not good to stay hours and hours in front of computers. Which but is you move around and try something else. It is the point. Will this be available also to others than just Cybergun partners? Do you think this will attract new partners to the Cybergun family? 
We will try to have uh, a cooperation with most of the industry in order to offer consumer as much as we can our largest line of products. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, it depends on the decision uh, of uh, the other uh, factories and mm -hmm. other partners. Uh, the park is open ID. Uh, where we uh, invite everybody to give us uh, advice and uh, fresh uh, uh, ideas. Do you have such a theme park already built somewhere? Yes, the first one that opened is in Nantes, that's 300 kilometers uh, west of Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, this park just opened two months ago mm -hmm. and it started to grow very fast. Well, this, this is most most impressive thing that I've seen, so I would like to thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. See I you wish you all the best and yes, see you next year. Thank you. This was Airsoft News from Eva from Cyberguns Thank you.